So two-time Super Bowl champion, six-time Pro Bowler, NFL all decade player. You can also catch him on Speak Monday through Fridays with his takes. He's the TV guy, says Debo, 430 Eastern on <laughs> FS1. My good friend, LaShawn McCoy, how are you? Hey, what's up? I can't hey, believe you didn't have no faith that I would make it on time for you. I did. Hamilton and I go, he will be here 100%. He will wake up, roll over, and get on the phone. And that's what you did. And I'm not, I wasn't worried about it. Why are you in Debo beefing? What's happening? Nah, that's that's my guy. He's uh he's a funny dude. He he texted me early this morning. Like, yo, it's Debo. Look, and he put Debo in all caps. Like, what? <laughs> so I didn't hit him back. That's why he said, what, call hang me up or uh, answer when I call you. What is he th- what do you think he wanted to talk about? You talk trash. I went to the Niners game two weeks ago. I was with Frank Gore, and we were on, we were in the uh, the locker room on the field, and everybody was cool, right? Here and there, Philadelphia talk. Debo's only one was like, "What's up with them Eagles?" Like, you know what I mean? Messing around with me, but great personality. <laughs> He's a hell of a player. He makes that that offense go. I'm happy for him. It, oh, see, that's nice. He wouldn't say the same back to the Eagles. No, he's not. He's not. A, he's not a big fan. He <laughs> likes AJ. That's about it. Listen, the Eagles lose to the Cowboys two weeks ago. You said you weren't worried about Jalen Hurts, but you were concerned or something, right? So he goes yeah. on the road. He throws two picks. He gets outplayed by a six and seven Seahawks team with Drew Locke slaying in the rock on him to JSN and company. Are we in the worried category? I'm starting to get concerned. And he doesn't look the same. And it's like, I, I think he's injured. Even when he runs, he looks a little shaky. And um, we're, at, we're at a standstill right now. Where it's like, what do we do next? I thought the defense played fairly well. Um, you know, gets a really good offense to that last drive. But then even on the offense, like, we have good moments and we have a setback. We have good moments and a setback. So I am nervous about my Eagles. I haven't seen us look like this in a long, long time. But I'm not really panicking, panicking yet. We lost, you know, three straight games, which you don't want. But we're we're still one of the top teams in the NFL. Just got to find a way to get back clicking again, man. Get back playing Philadelphia football. What did you make of, I don't know if you heard his comments there about the commitment to the team. I love your reaction to that because, you know, he's, you know, he had 143 yards. He had two interceptions. You're saying he doesn't look the same, whether it's injury or not. And he's the one questioning his team's commitment. What do you make of that? Yeah, I mean, I, and, and one thing about Jalen, when he when he speaks, um, speaks very well, like a, like a true leader. You could tell he's like a he's a he's a coach's son, right? But I understand that he said that we're all not basically locked in, and uh, I don't know if that was like a a team thing or a position or a person, coaches, you know. And then even like the little joke of the uh, or sarcasm with the dictionary, you know, Jalen's kind of always focused and serious. So him saying that, I just I don't know. You know, I, I'm definitely, when I hang up with you, I'm going to make some calls to, to get my sources like to see what's going on in the locker room. I don't like it. And then we'll see LaShawn McCoy is awake and the world has begun <laughs> to spin. So we will <laughs> check him out on FS1 on Speak uh, to figure that out, which we love. Um, okay, so they've lost three straight. You are starting to worry. They dropped down to the five seed, Shady. It's been a struggle all year for this offense. You got Shane Steichen and the Colts. Um, he's doing really well. We're talking coach of the year. Are we underreacting to how important he was to the success of Jalen Hurts, you think? Uh, I mean, yeah. I, I think when a player is as good as Jalen Hurts, you think he can succeed in any offense, any game plan. And, um, you know, I, I will say that I think we kind of miss him a little bit. One thing I will also bring up is when you watch a guy like that Prescott, guy like Brock Purdy, and you see the way they use him, I think with the Eagles, I think we're such a good offense with good players, with good offensive linemen and skill positions that we line up and play. When you watch the the, the Bronco or not, but the Brock, watch the Brock Purdy and the Niners, or you watch Dallas, there's tons of motions, right? There's tons of motions. There's tons of different formations. There's a lot of window dressing for the defense to defend, and I think that makes it a lot easier on the quarterback. I think Jalen Hurts is a hell of a quarterback. We can make it easier for him, and and um, the other quarterbacks that's having success in this league, like like Dak Prescott. I mean, you see C.D. Lamb everywhere on the field, right? And C.D. and A.J. Brown are they're really elite wide receivers. Brock Purdy, right? We just had um, Debo on, on the call, on the interview, and he's everywhere on the field, in the backfield, wide receiver, doing uh, screens, doing everything. Brandon Ayuk, you talk about McCaffrey. So they make it easier for the quarterback. I think that's one thing we're missing um, for the Eagles offense is, is give us some more window dressing and dress it up a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, you saw I saw Christian McCaffrey on Manning Cast last night, and he was just 
call, like as easy as pie predicting the Eagles plays before they happen. So there's a lot of talk about it being See? stale, offensively predictable. It's kind of a red flag and it's sort of circling the red flag and the red light is on Brian Johnson. Yeah. I mean, like, and then you, you think about all these elite teams, right? Like, I think Brock Purdy is a is a good quarterback. You know, I, I wouldn't put him in that elite co conversation yet. Yeah. You know, he says time, time to grow. But if you watch him, he's playing on an elite level. And it's the way that the office is ran. There's so many times where he's just putting the ball, and he's an accurate quarterback, but putting the ball when there's so much space because the misdirection. Kyle Shanahan is one of the best office coordinators in the game, and it makes it easier for his quarterback. So I just wish that we could kind of steal that. NFL is a copycat league. Let's copycat, take some of that, bring it to Philadelphia, give it to Jalen Hurts. Okay, but Brock Purdy has 17 touchdowns, my friend, to two interceptions over the last six games. That puts him, I mean, that's like insane. He passed Brady 07, undefeated Brady on the single season passer Raider list. What does he have to do for you to put him in that elite world? Yeah, I mean, I just, he's young. I, got, I just got to see more. I, I won't even speak Brady with, with Brock, but I, I'll say this. Like, um, I'll give you an example. When they played the, the Eagles um, in Philadelphia, they they smoked us, right? And if you really watch the game, he didn't throw not one pass over 17 yards. Mm. How, how do you do that and, and blow teams out, right? And that, that's a lot to Kyle Shanahan putting his players in position to win. There's so many times I was watching that game where you have so many different motions, and then you motion Kittle over. Kittle gets a wide-open pass for 25 yards. Five-yard pass for 25. Like, small things like that. You throw on Debo uh, uh, um, a five-yard, um, you know, dig route or, or, or a drag route. He takes it for 65 yards. Like, these are things I'm watching. You throw Debo a screen, screen for one yard, that goes 60. So I get yeah. at the end of, when you look at the end of the, 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 the game stats, you're going to see Brock Purdy, 300 yards, touchdowns. But when you watch the tape, they simplify the game for him. You get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. We need that. Okay. I'm more stuck on you. Say, I think you kind of said something nice about Dak Prescott, which I've never heard you say. So I was, you said something nice about him. He, no. Okay. Ooh, with some growth. <laughs> no, no, no. But even, but even Dak, I always thought Dak was like, I thought Dak was always above average quarterback. You know, like a good quarterback. Above average. And play. this above year, average. well, the last quarterback. about seven games, other than the Buffalo game, he's been playing elite level. He's been playing the best quarterback play we've seen all year. But when you really watch that game, like, they do so many different things on that offense. And a lot of shout out to uh, Mike McCarthy with that. But it's just, I want to take that and bring it to Philadelphia, make it easier for Jalen Hurts. I mean, but yeah. then again, that Prescott going to show up. My boy came back to reality. He was all, he was all the way up here. And he came back to the deck that I know. I would just like your phone for a minute just to see your mentions after after each Cowboys win and oh, loss. Man. We have to go. Friends, we have to go. We have, we have 30 seconds. We have 20 seconds left. In 20 seconds or less, should I not be worried about Andy Reid and the Chiefs? Are they going to fix it? Yes, they will. I think a lot of it is just the um, experience in the wide receiver room. They've had the most drops out of every you know receiver group in the NFL. But you have Andy Reid, the best coach to ever coach the game. And you have Patrick Mahomes, the best quarterback right now. So they'll so figure it out. Shady, shady. He looks so frustrated. Yeah. I mean, they've never been in a situation eight and five or nine and five. He's never been like that. They've always been like a winning team. Um, you know, and, and even like I think with Patrick Mahomes, he's struggling to he can't control everything. When I say that, he's throwing dots, ball in the hand, they dropped it as a pick. He can't control that, right? So, but he's that good that this is what I was telling everybody. If they put them in the playoffs, you don't want to see the Chiefs struggling or not. You don't want to see them. You don't know, but but you also I, I don't want to see Kadarius Tony out there. <laughs> like, why do we keep putting them in positions to be like, you know, that show the mole where somebody's like secretly trying to mess stuff up? Like, that's what Kadarius right. Tony is out there. Like, let's not get like Andy. I know you like like to give guys chances. Kareem Hunt fumbles, you keep him in there as rookie year, but like maybe not put him in those positions. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe right here. Do it now for the latest from Up and Adam.